good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful fall day, right? Yes, it's beautiful out. Let's stand up and sing our praises to the Lord today. Welcome to church, everyone. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, we shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, we shout out. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we are the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. We're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, we shout out your praise. Amen. Isn't that true? There's joy in the house of the Lord today. At your name. and shake and crumble at your name the oceans roar and tumble at your name angels will Yeah. 
Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? Some are well, some not so much. How are you doing today? So good to see you in church. Uh, and for those of you who are watching online, thank you, you for joining us uh, that way. Uh, pray that the Lord will bless you through this service this morning. Uh, I have my bride back with me this morning. Look at her down here. This girl says she doesn't care to talk about 2020 or 2021 for the rest of her life. Amen. So she'll, she'll be pretty much done with that. Are we having people stand still? What am I doing? I love oh, okay. <laughs> See, sometimes I get up here and I lose track of stuff. Um, but we're glad that you're here. And honey, it's good to have you um, back with us, with me. Say again. Home, yeah. Amen. It only took us three minutes to get to church today, so we're pretty happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Father, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for the hope that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. We shout your name in praise and adoration because you have done something in us that no one else could do. You have given us something that no one else could give us. Many could testify this morning to your transforming grace in their lives and for that we give you praise. This morning of baby Christian will make a public commitment of her faith by water baptism. And we know that when one person comes to know you, it sets the choirs in heaven to singing. And we say praise your name. So Lord, would your spirit settle down upon us this morning? Help us to hear from you Help us to be guided by the Spirit. Have your complete will and way, I pray. In Jesus' name, we said together, amen. God bless you. Oh, there's an offering to take. Be seated just for a minute. See, it's what happens when Roxana gets back to church with me. I get all excited and stuff. Yeah, I... I forget where I am. Ushers come, please. Goodness sake. Man, preacher, get your act together. What? Oh, goodness. Go ahead, guys. Pass the plates. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance
nothing stopping us from doing that right now. There's nothing stopping us from singing your praises no matter where we are, no matter what's going on in life, because you are there. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. Well, it's Thanksgiving week. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, we have several um, uh, bags, uh, gift bags for uh, families in town that we're going to be delivering for Thanksgiving, and those are represented up here. Uh, so for all of you who uh, took part in that, we say thank you, uh, and God bless you. It was a blessing and will be a blessing to, uh, to many. Uh, thank, thank the Lord uh, for that. Uh, so um, I, I want to uh, conclude this series um, on mission, connecting people with God, uh, with, with this thought of, uh, of us moving from being isolated to being uh, connected. Uh, and if we're going to connect people uh, to God, we need to be connected to him ourselves. Uh, and, and you know what I say, that we need, to, we need God to do something in us, so what? He can do something through us, right? So, we, we continue this thought that we are on mission and the church of Jesus Christ is always on mission. The mission never changes. Uh, the church is always on mission. Our methods change from time to time. Uh, the message stays the same. So in, in, on the inside of your bulletin, uh, we, we have this the, the serious goal, and, and my goal as your pastor, my, my heart for us as a church is that we have a vision for lost people and that we have a vision for personal spiritual growth as followers of Jesus. And so the, the goal is that each of us, the friends of Fremont Nazarene Church, will understand the mission of God and that we'll see ourselves as missionaries who are sent by God to be part of advancing his kingdom, right? And restoring fallen people uh, and the world around us to the image of God. And, and the challenge is that 
in my heart and in my thinking, I'm saying that the, the mission is simple. We make it complicated a lot of times. The mission of our church is to develop fully devoted followers of, of Christ who love God and love and serve others unconditionally, right? Because that's how Jesus would have us do. So the challenge that's before us is this vision that I have in my heart and in my mind uh, for us that, that uh, we intentionally connect people with God to our communities and to our circles of influence. You have a circle of influence. You have people involved in your life that I don't know, I haven't met, I may never meet them, but they are your circle of influence, right? So that, that we can influence them for Christ and we need to accept the challenge uh, to be faithful to the great commission that says go and the great commandment that says love. Everything we do as a church should revolve around those two things. That's not complicated, is it? It's just how God expects it to be. So, so in the last few weeks, we talked about being, moving from being confused about what the mission is to being focused on the mission. It's easy for us to get confused. Well, what are we doing as a church anyway? What, what is our, what's our goal as a church anyway? Let there be no confusion. Our job on this planet as the followers of Jesus is to connect people with him, to love them, to pray for divine appointments with people that we can share our story with. Let's focus on that, not the, not the little things that can distract the body, right? Because the devil loves us to be distracted, right? Hello? I heard some rights. The devil wants us to be distracted from the mission. And, and we move from being fearful to being courageous. Sometimes the last thing that some Christians want to do is share their faith. Because it's, it's, it's a fear thing, right? We're afraid of rejection. We're, we're afraid of a response that might not be positive. We'll be, we'll be uh, we're afraid that somebody might close the door in our face. I've had that happen before. I remember one day when I, back in the day, uh, I, I was out, uh, part of my job when I was in Bible college, I, I, was, an, I was a youth pastor, uh, and I was, uh, in, I was responsible for uh, evangeliz evangelism and outreach. And part of my job was to canvas the area. And because people were so afraid of doing that, you know who did it? This guy. So I was out one day knocking doors and uh, talking to them, introducing myself. And I got to this, I got to this one house uh, and, and uh, I, I rang the doorbell. And I noticed that the storm door uh, had the glass here, but it didn't have the glass panel down here, okay? So two kids came to the door. And Amber, Amber, the Doberman Pinscher. Yeah. And the kids came to the door. Amber, <laughs> Amber the dog was in the middle of them, and she was sitting back, you know, and, and uh, I, I said, is your mom or dad home? Yes, mom's home. I said, well, I'd like to talk to your mom. Well, we'll go get her. So the two of them left me alone with Amber. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I took a couple of steps back, uh, and, and I'm thinking, that dog is going to come through that empty panel. And as, as soon as I thought that, that dog, Amber, 
who should never have been named Amber in the first place, jumps out that, that bottom pane right here at me. And I, I put my coat up, and it was winter. It was cold outside. I had a real nice leather jacket on, and Amber planted her uh, jaws right here on my arm. Yeah, you feel bad for me, right? right? I've never forgotten this, and this is like 30 years ago, maybe more, maybe more. Roxanne is still laughs her head off about this story. I kicked that dog in the throat in a very Christian sort of way. I, I kicked that dog right in the throat and, and went back into the house, and I got, I, I ran into my car. I don't run much of anywhere, but I ran to my car that day. I came home. I said, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Fearful? Let's move to courageous. You know, we can ask God for boldness for sharing our story. And we've talked, to, we, we've talked about the fact that every one of us uh, believers, we have a story, a transformation story. And we can share that. The devil doesn't want us to share it. That's why he puts spear in our hearts, right? And we need to move from being dormant to being fruitful, right? The church of Jesus Christ needs to stop. We need to stop being on the back burner, and we need to move our faith to the front, right? Doesn't matter what anybody says or anybody else does. Our society has pushed the church back and said, you guys sit over here at the kids' table and and you'll be okay. But we don't need to sit at the kids' table any longer. We need to move out from being dormant to being fruitful because of what Jesus said in John 15, right? And then today I want to talk about moving from being isolated to being committed. And you've, you've heard me connected, excuse me. Move from being isolated to being connected. And you've heard me say that one of the things that was hardest on us about this COVID experience was the isolation. God didn't create us for isolation. God created us for relationship. That's the bottom line. That's why a lot of our difficulties came because we were isolated. Could you imagine what it must have been like for Roxana? to be quarantined with me uh, and, and to be shut down uh, for all those months in our house in Lincoln, I'm pretty certain she came that close to losing her mind. Because I go crazy. I need, to, I need noise. And so we, we created projects to do, and I'm not going to dwell here, but we, we created these projects that we never should have created in the first place. They turned out okay, and it helped us fill some time, and it helped us to laugh at each other. So one evening, we're sitting in, the, in our living room, and we're watching a show on TV, and Roxana was kicked back, and, and one of the things that I get, I kind of get a little joy out of, uh, is scaring her. And so I, I will, I would just go, you better wake up, because I'm going to do it. I would just go, wow! <laughs> she would go, <laughs> you're going to make me have a heart attack, man, don't do that. Anymore. Wow! Uh, this is monologue, not dialogue. <laughs> you, you are, she is part of the team, right? Yeah, let's give it up for Roxanne. All right, yeah, that's true right there. Man, I'm, I'm, uh, but here's our purpose today. And we're, 
We're going to get into the scripture while I still can. Um, it's to understand that God's, God calls me and God calls you to surrender my, my personal privileges, if you will, and my freedoms. And he calls us to serve others in Jesus' name and to encourage them toward Jesus. Right? So look, let, look with me at uh, what Paul had to say in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, uh, and I'm going to begin at verse 19. Remember, we're talking about moving from being isolated to being connected. 1 Corinthians 9 and 19. Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone, listen to this, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became, became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, I'm under Christ's law, so as to win those having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all men so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this, I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Wow. I think that there comes a time in our lives as Christians when we need to and must take our hands off our lives and give our life in complete surrender to God. And we need to say to God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Whatever you want me to say, I'll say it. Whatever you want me to be, I'll be. We turn our hands this way. We let go of those personal rights and privileges to serve others, to serve God by serving others. That's kind of what Paul is doing here. And it's not easy. But it's, it's the purpose that God created us for. And I, I'm, not, I'm not wanting you to, to pat us on the back or anything like that, but I just want to give you the, the, the personal illustration of this for us. I mean, it was years ago. I mean, we've been, we've been doing this ministry thing for 42 years now. And, and we've moved from one place to the next, asking God every time, is this your will for our lives? And we came to a point when we had, to, we had to let go and let God have his perfect way in our lives. And that was never truer than 13 years ago when uh, Dr. Larry White, the then district superintendent here in Nebraska, called me about uh, considering Omaha Central to pastor. Uh, and we did the deal, we did the interview, all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, on the way home from the interview, uh, she looks over at me and says, with big old tears in her eyes, we're moving, to, we're moving to Omaha, aren't we? And I said, I, I think so. Well, the tears weren't, weren't tears of, of um, that I don't like those people or I don't like that church or anything like that. It was the fact that for the first time in our ministry, we, would believe, we wouldn't take one of our kids with us. We'd be leaving our kids behind. And, and then 
our grandkids had just started being born. And um, that was tough. But we knew beyond the shadow of a doubt in our heart that this was God's call on our life. That we needed to do that. And when God puts his call on your life, those, those, those rights and those privileges uh, are not... Oh, I don't know how to say this. We don't focus on that. We focus on what God is speaking into our hearts. The beautiful thing about this is that our, our four adult children now understand this. And they have a great understanding of it because they've lived it their lives. So when it came to taking this assignment and doing the dual role thing again, that to the four of them said, Dad, if that's what you feel like God wants you to do, you should do it. You should do it. But please retire soon and come back home to us. And then we heard Pastor Tom say a couple of Sundays ago that, that no one, re preachers don't retire. Well, thanks, Pastor Tom. <laughs> Appreciate that. So we hear what Paul is saying. He said he became all things, all things to all people. Paul, he makes it so deeply personal. And I want you to know that this assignment for me, for Roxana, is deeply personal. We believe in our heart of hearts that God wants to move in a miraculous way upon this church and upon this community. Paul made it very deeply personal. And we need to make winning people to Christ deeply personal as well. The mission, it's not something that, that he does, uh, that Paul does. It's, it belongs to the essential character of who he is. And it's that way for us, folks, right? That's why I said we don't need to make it complicated at all. I don't need to give you a, a journal this thick written by me and several hundred other people and say, okay, this is going to be our plan. Don't need to do that. The Bible's given us a plan to be faithful to the Great Commission and the Great Commandment, right? We just do that. And we take that responsibility deeply personally That's what it's about. And, and being a Christian cannot be separated from being on mission for God. And, and, and you can't say, well, you know, Pastor, uh, I, I'd like to help you and the staff do that, but that's kind of what we pay you for, isn't it? Okay, that right there might get you punched in the mouth in a very Christian sort of way. Being a Christian cannot be separated from being on mission for God, and all of us are on mission for God. You cannot have a passion for God and not have a passion and a love for people. Right? And we got to love people in this room. We got to love people that God brings into our lives. We got to love Uncle Bill when he comes to the Thanksgiving dinner. And he's the weirdest guy in all the world. And he talks about stuff that he shouldn't talk about. And he brings up past things that you would just soon rather forget. And I know you don't have people in your family like that, but there are some in our family like that. So I'm looking forward to Thursday because stirring the, the, stirring the pot is my gift. I hope he shows up. And I hope he's not watching online right now. 
because you know who you are. The idea of being a Christian is intrinsically about the mission. We need to move from being isolated to being connected. How much love do I have for lost people? How much love do you have for lost people? Well, you know, a lot of them. They don't look like us. They don't act like us. They don't dress like us. Okay. Your point is? How much do I love lost people? Henry Allen says this, my own desire to be useful, to do something significant, or to be part of some impressive object so strong that soon my time, listen, soon my time is taken up by meetings and conferences and study groups and workshops that prevent me from walking the streets. I think the devil loves nothing more than when we pair off in our committees and we go do committee work for two hours when we could be out witnessing for Jesus for two hours. I think the devil gets very happy when we get into the board meetings, marathon board meetings, which I don't, I don't agree to with anyway. Marathon board meetings that take two or three hours and we're not, he likes to get us bogged down in, in, in meetings and stuff like that, right? That's what Henry Nowen is saying right here. But then look at this. I wonder more and more if the first thing shouldn't be to know people by name. Hear me now. To know people by name. To eat and drink with them. To listen to their stories and tell your own. And to let them know with words and handshakes and hugs that you don't simply like them, but you truly love them. I wish I had said that. Well, I just did, but I'm quoting Henry now, right? What if, we, what if we moved out of our meeting rooms and got with people and learned their names and learned their story and shared our story and our love for Jesus, right? right? Oh, man, how much do I love lost people? And there needs to be intentional determination. How willing am I to serve others? Hmm. Do you know why we serve as Christians? You know why we serve others? Because He is our Lord. We serve because He is our Lord. So I don't, I don't serve you because you are my Lord. I serve you because he is my Lord. And this is his direction for all our lives. How willing am I to serve, serve others? And Paul talks about that in 24 through 27. But, but in John's Gospel, chapter 15, Jesus said, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Let me give you an example real quickly here as to how, how disconnected uh, society has become. And it dawned on me, this dawned on me uh, uh, a few years ago. I, um, I would pull in... You know, we have these garage door openers, which are fantastic. I would hit the button. The garage door would go up. I would pull my car in. I hit the garage button. It would go down, and I walk from my garage to my house and don't see one person. Okay, well. Well. What if, 
this is how simple I am in my mind, simple-minded in so many ways. What if we just leave the garage door up and instead of walking right into the house, we walk out and maybe maybe our neighbor will be in our driveway or his driveway and, and we can we can say hi or you know talk to them instead of instead of just like closing the door up and closing it down and then and then going into the house and not seeing anybody, right? That's how disconnected we've become. So we have a neighbor, his name is Bob, Bob and Susie. They live across the street from us. And Bob, Bob would do anything for us. He, w- when we're gone, he cuts our grass. When we're gone and even when we're home, uh, a lot of times he makes sure the snow is off our driveway and sidewalks. When we first moved in there, Bob found out what I did because he asked what do you do for a living? You retired? Yeah? No? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a minister. I told him, well, where do you minister? I said, I tried to explain superintendency to him. And he got it. He said, well, I'm going to tell you what, whenever you're gone, I'm going to take care of your lawn. I'm going to take care of the snow. You don't worry about anything. I'll look after your house. So I talked to Bob this week. The day, the day two years ago when I had my stroke, the first one at our door was Bob. Bob was by my side wiping my face with a cold cloth and wiping my arms with a cold cloth. And he said, you're my pastor. Don't worry about Roxanne. I'm, I will take care of her. So I talked to Bob this week. Told him we were moving to Fremont. He shed some tears. Well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Whose grass am I going to cut? Who snow am I going to move? Where do I get a new preacher? Old retired railroad, railroad guy. Loves Oklahoma football. So I rev Nebraska football and Ohio State football in his face. But we've cared for Bob, and Bob has cared for us. But the truth of the matter is, he's taking care of us more than we've taken care of him. Move from being isolated to getting connected. Leave the garage door up the next time you pull into the garage. Look for your neighbor. Look for the Holy Spirit to bring you some divine appointments. Be sensitive. We're on a mission, church. Time can't be much longer before Jesus comes back. We need to be on mission, connecting people with God. We are part of that mission for us, for our, for our church, is to recognize when uh, someone gives their heart to the Lord and full faith and assurance that uh, he can forgive and will forgive if confession is made. Uh, we believe that. We live that. Uh, and this morning at the close of this service, we're going to baptize a new believer who I believe found our church by way of 
celebrate recovery. Her job, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. I I want you to uh, to watch a video just for a minute, please. Christmas and here two weeks ago he came and we were changed in life and my parents were together at my new little preschool and I was growing up in a church home and uh, I was preschooling I was going to be with them and I asked them Myra actually made me decide to believe in Jesus she prayed for me one day so I would take care of my mom who was very cold and younger and my mom was like so the recovery took up for me, and my aunt Sarah took up for me, and my nanny and Brian and Rich took up for like the next six weeks. So the people that helped me know Jesus was my Catherine, my aunt Sarah, my nanny, and my great grandfather. I want to give a big thank you to my Catherine. If it wasn't for her praying for me that day at her house, I would have never been serious about growing a relationship back with Jesus Christ. Because I have stepped on this path and this journey, I have been able to grow a relationship back with my grandmother who has been a strong believer my whole entire life. She calls me my grandmother as a child. Uh, to give myself to God and become committed to Him and to share His word and my story. My name is Kayla and I'm a child of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Kayla, child of God, come up here. Let's, let's give it up for Jesus, his work in Kayla's life from right around here. Don't get those converse wet. Christian? Yes. Forgiven? Yes. Restored? Yes. Renewed? Yes. Now when she comes up out of the water, this church better be praising Jesus. All right? This is a public testimony of your confession of faith and your uh, recognition that Jesus has washed your sins away. To become a follower of Jesus, we need to confess and receive him. Amen? Amen. So, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that great? Amen. Yes. Amen. God bless you, Kayla. Yes. Jesus turned the water into wine, but you turned it through. <laughs> I just told her Jesus may have turned the water into wine, but she just turned it blue. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And, and you have uh, inserted in your bulletin uh, uh, about baptism and what we believe about baptism. Uh, you read that. If there are others who would like to be baptized, uh, let us know that, okay? Because that right there is powerful. Jesus transforms lives. Amen. Join that we did this song at the very beginning. And we felt that. like we needed to close the service this way too. So join us in worship. We worship the 
God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, we shout out your praise. the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolls the stone away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, we shout out your praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prayers. have been that one at some point that Jesus left the 99 for. And today we got to witness that. So as we go through this week, think about the other people in our lives that need to be that one and invite them with you. Have a great week, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. See you next weekend. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. I forgot. Don't leave. What do you want them to do? Come back. Okay, so we're going off the rails here. Hey, we need these bags delivered. If you want to talk about an opportunity to serve today, like Pastor was talking about, all of these bags are going to a family in our community, your opportunity to serve a family. Um, the addresses are on them. We're just asking for people to drop them off. And what my husband doesn't know is that any of them are left. We have to drop off. So please, please, please help us out and make somebody... Um, Somebody's family, have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week now. <laughs>